right, so in this tutorial, we're going to use Benchling to make a vector map. So when you uh, log into Benchling, you can get a free account for this if you are an, in academia, so choose that setting. And then when you open it and you choose the molecular tools, um, what it'll bring up is this vector map as kind of a demonstration. And so this one is called PBR322 with the uh, EGF receptor uh, gene inserted into it. And so that's their example. So you're going to want to make a new one using our PGLO sequence. So to do that, you're going to go up to this corner, and that's where you can add a new DNA sequence. And so select there. And then we'll call this one the PGLO plasmid. And it's circular. And we will put this into the, the example project is fine. And then um, we'll put in the bases. So you want to copy paste this from Canvas. And this is the entire sequence for that plasmid needs to go in there. And then you can hit Create. Oh, I misspelled plasmid. Look at that. All right. But anyway, um, we can select this. And I think I can rename it. OK, so I can correct my error there and put in plasmid, hit OK. And then um, we've got the plasmid set up right here. So you can see that it has the restriction enzyme sites that are indicated in there. And it gives you the entire size. But right now, you don't have any annotations in there uh, to indicate where the different gene sequences are within that plasmid. All right, so we need to add the annotations in here. And so there is a help section here. So when you select Add Annotations, it actually tells you how to do this. And so the first gray button up in the upper right-hand corner is the Annotations button. So when you select on this, it will give you the ability to put in annotations that are specific. And we'll need to do that. But it will also let you auto-annotate it. And so we're going to start with that. And we'll select Search All Libraries. And this one is pulling out four different things. So it's found our F1 origin of replication, the M13 origin, uh, the Col E1 origin, and it's found the ampicillin resistance gene. So you notice it, it missed the PGLO, the, the GFP protein. And it also missed the second protein in there which is the Arabinose one. So we're going to have some things that we have to add back to this. But we can go ahead and add these annotations into our plasmid. So um, when you see the annotations in here, but you can see where they are in this sequence, right? and um, you can click on them. And it will highlight that sequence uh, here as well. So we can get rid of our. Uh, tutorial key so that we can see the sequence. So we're, we're navigating in a few planes within this program. So you can see the sequence on one side, and you can see the plasmid on this side. So when we're on this side, we can scroll up and down, and we can see that sequence. You can also note where the F1 origin is, and the M13 origin, and the E. coli origin as well. OK, so we're going to have to put in a few different sequences as well and annotate where we find the GFP protein in this vector, and also um, where we find the Arabinose gene as well. All right, so to find out where the other genes are located, we need to know where they're at within this sequence. And you'll notice when you look at the BioRad handout, uh, that I also attached in your Canvas website, that that handout doesn't tell you exactly where those genes are located in this DNA sequence. So to find those, you have to use another tool. And there are many different tools that you can use to do this. But I, I like one that's called Orf Finder. 
and that's the one that I'll introduce you to here. So if you open up a new tab, and if you put in ORF Finder, O-R-F Finder, this stands for Open Reading Frame Finder. And this is a free tool that the um, National Center for Bioinformatics is going to have on its website. So we're going to go there. And so we're going to enter our sequence in there. This is the same BioRad sequence that we put into our plasmid um, maker. And we're going to put that in here as well. And then we'll just submit this entry. All right, so when you search this in ORF Finder, it's going to bring up a bunch of stuff, right? So it finds every open reading frame within this sequence. So when you're looking at your vector map, I'm going to pull that into the frame here for a second. All right, so I want you to find the C protein or gene and the GFP gene, right? So the two genes that encode these two proteins. The C protein is the transcriptional regulator that's controlled by arabinose, and it will bind to this promoter, and it will allow the transcription of that gene, the GFP protein, so that the E. coli can actually make that protein and uh, have it expressed. Okay, so this is under the control of that product there. So I want you to locate and put in the C and the GFP into your map sequence. So to do that, you have to find them. They're going to be pretty big open reading frames in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just select this big open reading frame first. And you can see when you do that, it will bring that sequence down here. And then uh, when you do that, you can blast it against the NCBI database. And so we're just going to run the smart blast and see what this will align with and if we can identify what that open reading frame is and then find where it's at. Okay, so once that runs, um, we can scroll down and we can see the top hits for the sequence alignment and there is era C. So that was fortunately the first one that we hit. Um, so we can go back then to our uh, or finder and we can uh, mark this one. Or 41 is um, going to be the C protein. So we can see the start site is at 1025, and you'll want to write that down somewhere so you can remember it. And it ends at 96 bases. So what that's telling you is the direction, right, of your of your plasmid. So in here, we have somewhere up in here is going to be zero, right? And then we start moving in this clockwise direction on our plasmid until we get to 5,371, somewhere up in here. And then the plasmid ends and it goes to zero again, and then you start over. So what this is telling you is that the C uh, gene is running right, in this direction from about 1,000 bases down to about 96 bases. And so we will want that arrow to show up in this segment here when we add that annotation. All right, so when we want to put the era C gene onto our plasmid, you want to go into the annotations again, and you want to select the new annotation. And so we will call this era C and it is a gene, so we can just put gene in there. And this is important. You have to go from the small to, <clears throat> to the large in here. So even though this ends at 96 and starts at 1025, we're going to say it starts at 96 and ends at 1025. And then we're going to say it's in the reverse direction. And that will get the arrow in the correct orientation. And note that the beginning is actually at 1025, and then we'll end at 96. And then you can choose the color that you want for the arrow C. I like this turquoise one here, so I'm going to select that and add the annotation. And then you can see it's added the arrow C 
right into our plasmid in the correct place. So you'll need to go back in and find the GFP protein and add the GFP protein back in here. It would also be nice to have the PBAD promoter, but we won't worry about that for now. So you just need to get RSC in there, and then also the GFP, which should be somewhere in this locale. All right, there you go for your tutorial for creating your vector map. Once you've created your vector map, you'll need to make a screenshot of this and download this into a Word document that you can turn in and show me that you made your map. All right, happy map making.